All right, we're going to welcome in a uh, special guest here to the Hashmark Show. Uh, this is probably, I'm going to say, this is probably our biggest guest other than Ricky Knotts' first show on here when we brought in our first capper. Let's welcome into the program uh, Gino himself. I told my wife tonight, hey, we got Gino on from Bed Openly. She's like, who's Gino? Anyways, no, <laughs> Gino, no welcome offense. into the program, man. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, me, me and Run It Up go way back, uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited to be in the same room with all, all you four need- of you. When, when I was talking to, to Ricky Knotts about who we should have on next, and I had mentioned, hey, we're doing all these bet openly bets because we love peer-to-peer betting. We, we, we do uh, the picks every week. We, we, we disagree. We agree, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and Ricky Knotts is like, yo, we got to talk to Gino at bet openly. So you guys do go uh, way back. When did you first uh, meet Knotts? Shit, homie, when did we? Was it TikTok? Was it Instagram? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was TikTok. I think what it is is I think it was, like, it was like a lot of people always – always like uh just like maybe tagging me in one of your videos tagging tagging you in one of my videos and it was just kind of like like hey you guys don't realize me and me and gino we on the same tip we're both trying to trying to teach you guys the truth here so yeah and i would say too paying you a compliment i think we were two of the i don't want to say only but like let's say there's a thousand cappers out there you could just recognize right away we were two of maybe 10 or 20 that were real and the other you listen to some of the videos and you're like oh they're just making stuff up every week or regurgitating what they heard but they never done it exactly exactly you and, know uh, um sorry go, go ahead and now. you know Matt, I, I think maybe you know I, i'm just uh i'm just a lot uglier than gino so that's probably why <laughs> that's why well, i mean look at gino over here you're bro. saying he's, he's <laughs> Chill out, bro this Chill is- out, bro. I gotta put my filter on. Hold up. Gotta- you look good. Man. <laughs> yeah. You look the best out of all of us, man. Yeah. You look really good, man. Um, you know, I I it, for me, I wasn't on TikTok as long as you guys uh have been or 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 were are whatever, um, still am. You know, it still surprises me how small the uh, audiences or the, the capping spaces or, or like who started off and who's still around, uh, which kind of generated the reason for this show. And, and you, we kind of have the same mindset. Cause you were like, I remember one TikTok you did, you know, I'm going to go just interview a bunch of every better on here. I'm just going to interview him. And I'm telling Iron, I'm like, dude, this fucking guy, Gino's killing me. He's just fucking, I, I, I tell Chris this idea. And then Gino takes it. I go, <laughs> what is he? You know, I'm going to interview everybody first. Sure. And I'm going to be the guy on fucking TikTok. Well, hey, there's, I mean, there's plenty of people, man. But it's, it's funny how small it is. We're like the only people doing it. If we stay on long enough, I mean, TikTok's going to fucking have to hire us. Right. And stay on, dude. I'm telling you, they do these, these kids burn out because half of them are making up plays. They can't deal with the heat. They can't weather a storm. They get a little hot. They get, you know, five winning days in a row. They go viral, they blow up and then it all comes crashing out and they, and they run away and hide because they, they took a little bit of money. So I, I would say just stay on the path because I need more OGs in this space. I can't tell you how many dudes I'm embarrassed. I put my name next to that just weren't real and fade out real quick because i'll tell anyone hey man give me picks like I, i'm not I'll, I'll pay for them i'll do whatever i just got to make sure you're not full of shit and these dudes will burn out quick they're just they're just throwing darts so let's let's talk about bed openly for anybody who doesn't know what it is what is bed openly and how did it start and, and how did you get this idea of peer-to-peer betting and what was it ultimately uh for I'll give you the whole story and I'll, I'll start with what is bet openly. It's, it's peer-to-peer 1% percent you. So make your own lines and odds. You can bet the inverse of any bet we'll post on the live feed for a stranger to take, or you can text it, email it, WhatsApp it, tweet it at anyone you want. So basically think about we're cutting out the books at the end of the day. Um, I still think books need to exist. I'm friendly with the books. I've been on a couple of podcasts with uh, sponsored books on there. And I tell them they're great for the long shot lottery tickets, the nuanced props. But if you're betting money line spread or team total, there's, excuse me, a game total, there's no need. Because for every person that likes Houston, there's someone that likes Philly tonight. Yeah, for sure. So how do you get somebody, though, who wants to put bigger money down on some of these bets? You go on the website, and this is a, and, and again, yeah. you know, I see a $35 bet, $25 bet. I mean, do I just go in there and try to eat up as much as I can? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I know, yeah. um, you know, Knotts has a similar philosophy to some other things. Absolutely. So what I'll say is actually the bigger problem we have is the bigger bets getting taken, not getting created. So we got, 
I, I we're kind of operating as a black box the way we wrote all the code. But let me just say this: every day you see between ten and twenty thousand dollar bets that don't fill with very fair lines. So the, actually, the inverse problem is getting people to chip away at it. So what we created one once we started accepting cryptocurrency, the size of the bets went way up. We were previously very hmm. limited by PayPal. So the last two months, we've had a huge increase once we added direct deposit in crypto. Secondly, we also allowed people to take as little as $10 of any bet. So I was super proud last Sunday night football, some dude had an $18,000 bet out there. I'm like, that ain't getting filled. It's gonna be another unhappy customer. It actually filled with over 56 people, filled it. So they chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. Oh, wow, away. to fill the 18. Okay. So he went one. Yeah. He, so he went one on fifty six. Yeah. So technically, the dude put out the bet. I don't want to get too deep in software. If unless you want to, it's just boring for most no, people. No. No. Long story short, let's just pretend you create. We'll use tonight's game. Let's just say you liked Houston plus thirteen, and you made a thousand dollar bet. Someone could take as little as ten bucks of it, or if you create the opposite, the software will automatically connect it like a tender. It'll it'll just if you if you create a bet. If you don't look at a live feed and you just create it and it automatically fills, it means that the inverse was already out there. With the song, oh, we, we, we added a geez, lot of like, bro. That's cool. I mean, that's great. That's very cool, Gina. I you. figured it was just like, you know, I put my bet out there and someone's just got to click on it. It's got to be the whole thing and whatever. But now you can actually like gang up on a guy kind of in a way. Like, yeah, you can do a bunch him of down. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, that's talking that's about really cool, bro. Yeah, that is nice. That is interesting. I should have put a bet out there tonight. I loved, uh, I love, uh, we have, the over. we have the over 45 and then we have Houston plus well, Houston 14. plus 14, whatever that's at. Uh, but I didn't put it out there. I didn't put it out there. Okay. So, um, I, so, so how to get started though? Where was the drive from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously you're, you're a driven dude. Um, yeah, I'll be real. I was a bookie in high school and college, uh, moved. Uh, so I, you know, started taking bets in high school. Moved down to San Diego State, started taking bets there, came back to Silicon Valley. I'm from San Francisco. Started taking some pretty big people's bets in Silicon Valley. Tech money was thrown around. Wow. Moved, okay. to New York, moved to New York to expand. Thought I was going to be a bookie for the rest of my life. Got involved with the Chicago syndicates. Used to have people running my numbers to local bookies. Did all this shit. Kind of got hot. Had some stuff happened with Chicago. So I went down to Argentina. I was going to try and start offshore and out of nowhere, uh, PASPA gets overturned. So I tell my wife, we're moving home. Uh, I'm not, I'm no longer in the shadows. Moved back, started creating bed openly about four years ago, spent about two years in stealth while a lot of people were still getting shut down. I wasn't sure how it would shake out. And yeah, dude, just been, basically I said, what well, could put a bookie out of business? And I was like connecting strangers on bets. So we originally made it super social, like screen names, usernames, you follow people. And what I noticed is this, the whales didn't like that. And I had to appeal to the whales. It was the guys that like bet five bucks here and there that were like, oh, it's super fun to talk shit and like, like, and like bets and comment on them. But then I realized we had to make it private. So essentially it is anonymous. You can create any bet, any line, any odds, but I, I did take away the social part. I'm going to add chat rooms into that bullshit, but the bets will always remain. We just didn't want people like tracking people by username or finding out. Who's yeah, that, that was my next question after, after hearing that. It was like, well, what about, the, yeah, what about the people who don't want the government to know what they're doing? Like, how, how, is, how is that anonymous? I, I don't, yeah. We can go off, off the record. No, no, no. I'll answer anything. So, like, like, it depends if you ask me. Like, are you asking me for my, like, we've had 10 shots of tequila and I'm opening up to you? Or are you asking me, like, legally, how does that go down? So, technically, uh, you, yeah. you deposit. So, you deposit via... Uh, direct deposit, PayPal, et cetera. So technically there is a track record. If you choose not to pay tax and all that, that's on you, not on us. Um, sure. Okay, good. That that side of it. Yeah. So like we're all taken care of. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure people doing things, you know what the most interesting use case. And I swear it wasn't like me being Mr. Cool, but I was like, I was like, I don't know, man, do your thing. I had bookies asking. So like, they're like, Hey, my guy's calling bets at 10%. Can I place them with you at one? And I said, you can use bet openly. Just leave out that first sentence because it has nothing to do with me. I'm not collecting from your dudes. I don't know your dudes. But if a dude wants, you know, Houston plus 13 at minus 110 and you can get it even money with me, yeah, take your 10%, no risk. But mm -hmm. that's a, 
it's not, it's not a convo I'm going to get involved in. Love it. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's just beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, okay. So, um, we, we, we go from, you, you've got a lot of videos out there that I, I love to watch and really were some of the first videos I saw where you were doing more of the teaching people, you know, uh, bankroll management and you were saying, Hey, I've been there before, or, Hey, I was you. Cause you see a lot of these comments and you do a really good job, by the way, you get a lot of good fan interaction. Somebody will say something, um, you know, Hey, you made me, uh, you know, take this game. And I, I put, you know, take us through that, you know, um, how, how many times did you have to fall to literally learn bankroll management? Was it, was it being, Oh, it couldn't have been when you were a bookie, right? You'd be, you'd be gambling yeah. before you were a bookie, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the best so, way to learn. Huh, Gina? Yeah, exactly. So like if you, if you had to really dumb it down, I was a bookie to support my gambling habit. I'm going to be honest okay. with you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. If I liked the game, I would have better odds on it. If my guys were betting the opposite, and if I like the same, I would push it to someone else. So I was just gambling with better odds. If you really want to call a spade a spade. Uh, and I lost it all a few times. I would, I would say my entire twenties, I never, I never did so bad that like I had, like I borrowed money from friends. Don't get me wrong. I borrowed thousands of dollars from multiple friends. I got them all back, but I never played with fire. Like there were, there's a lot of, and I, I don't mean anything by this, but there's a lot of Asian mafia in San Francisco. I was running numbers with them and doing stuff. I never, got to a point where I owed more than I could get my paws on in the next couple of months. But there were definitely times where I had net worth negative, owed more than I had, but I always had a job, always had more money coming in. So yeah, I was playing with fire for a long time. And then essentially uh, what, what we were just running up was eventually alluding to after I started like really seeing that my customers ain't winning, like period. And I can see it. I can see behind the curtain. How the fuck can I keep losing everything over and over and over? And I was like, so I started like super analyzing like my picks. And I noticed I chased on Sunday nights. I noticed I, you know, I bet favorites more than I bet dogs. And that's essentially, you kind of mentioned it before we started recording. He basically said like, you know, fade the public if it seems too good to be true. I actually noticed that the most obvious plays like my knee jerk reaction without any data were losses. Like the books are that good at sucking you in. Like when you see a number that's like, that's, that ain't right. I'm all over it. And that's the game that breaks everyone. And I noticed the guys, my clients, there would just be games that like if I had a hundred clients, 75 would be on. Wow. And I like the game too. And I noticed that I was pushing off all my winners. And then I was like, I just need to change my mind state. So that that's so crazy, Gino, because that's the same way that I literally learned, bro. Like I, I never heard that side of your story, man. That's crazy to hear though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and not, not you way. have a yeah, I mean you have somewhat of a a, 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 a familiar story, right? You know, degenerate gambler and learn the game, right? Well, no, I mean, it just no, took me to be on, on the side where, where I was taking in the bets and watching. Yeah. And right. like Sorry. seeing the mistakes everybody was making from the book side to, to realize the mistakes I was making. I mean, it's a very similar story. It's crazy. So that's, that's one thing. That's what I'm sorry. That's one thing I've learned throughout this whole show as well is like sometimes being Mr. Opposite is, is actually a, a really good play. Without a doubt. If you can, if you just, can just put aside what you believe is going to happen. Yeah. And just literally say, what does everyone think can't happen? And just fucking drop your balls on the table and say, whatever someone thinks can't happen yeah. and fucking bet it. That's, I mean, I hate to say that it's that easy, but if you ever think a bet can't lose, that motherfucker's losing. No, tonight, tonight's I mean, a great example. Tonight's a great example. I mean, a great example. we hit, we hit, we hit uh, Houston team total plus seven and a half. Houston first half plus seven and a half, and we hit Houston plus fourteen. What, uh, what about Gino? The public was some, all over some, some something mm -hmm. I've been telling everybody too though is, is that don't just strictly use that right. Like of course not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to uh, to also like you got to have you know you can't just strictly say oh look everybody thinks this is gonna happen so I'm gonna bet this is gonna happen because the, the public is right sometimes because that's the only way that uh the sports books actually stay in business, right? I mean, 
hundred percent. The public just lost every single play, then there would be no no uh so so you really gotta pick the spots and have more analogy and more more backups on every play you got than just strictly because I see a lot of people now that like you know they're strictly just feeding people the you know the obvious like okay look all the money's here and 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 you know that that's definitely a part of it and that's definitely a part of my handicap. I know that I know a lot of handicappers that pay absolute no attention to that. But to me I do pay attention to it and it's one of the boxes I do want to check but I need other boxes checked as well right like not, not, not just yeah not just strictly yeah, ahead, I, don't, I don't want to over chilling for bed openly because real I, I'm serious I'm a degenerate I, I'm first bed openly came second and I'll just tell you the truth is you can't just fade the public at 10% juice and dude the, these books now take 15 to 20 if you really look closely at certain situations but I will tell you at 1% you actually can because they do lose at least 53% of the time. But to Rico's point, they, I've even seen the public get as high as 45% winners, but still 45% minus the 10% you paid, you're severely in the green. And then usually they double up. Yeah. And that's part of uh, the strategy that we've, I've implemented this year was I'm trying to now pick those spouts, those spots and games out, which are the ones that are the actual blowouts versus not. And I mean, you look at this week and it's, I don't even know if there is one where, where is the weird one? I mean, the so, so that's been harder to do, right. You know, than than finding the easy, the ones in my mind, which would be easier like tonight, absolute no brainer. 14 is just so many points. It, it, well, doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter. I do think, and I bet Gino will agree with me. I do think it's, it's more like these, uh, like these, these games that are, you know, like, like 11, well, you know, 12 o'clock Eastern time, Sunday morning, I, I don't think necessarily uh, just looking at what the public's on and all that really matters. But but these single standing games, you know, as a Thursday night football game or Monday night, Sunday night, I think it does matter quite a bit more, in my opinion. What you think about that, Gino? Yeah, I agree. What what I would say, like, there's just some triggers, right? Like, oh, dude, I used to give, a, I used to live off the Wong teaser, and now that everyone knows what it is. It's dead. It's not, it's not exactly the, it's not that like the theory behind it changed. It's not that games are fixed. That's my only thing I'll argue with people till I'm blue in the face. It's the fact that once everyone knows about it, it's like buying a stock high. Once everyone knows about it, the value shrinks. And they're that fucking good that you're not gonna win it as many times as you used to. And that's the difference of profit and loss. That's what it comes down to. Yes is they're now moving lines to make the wrong games be a Wong that didn't used to be a Wong and stuff like that. And that's you, how good they oh are. Oh, my God. Do you, do that's you think, exactly what I was thinking, think, bro. So, so uh, my mic is off. The teaser's okay. been asked this year. But, 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 but not. So here, real quick, Eddie, it's a great question because I want Gino to explain that. We've talked about it 100 times. I mean, even though me and Ricky Knotts have explained it blue in the face to this fucking show, yeah. Ireland wants a refresher. Eddie wants a refresher. But yeah, before, yeah. We do, before we do that, let's talk amongst the people who understand it. Just Gino <laughs> and Ricky Knotts real quick. This week, I think they come back strong. You know, I think we've seen them getting fucking murdered because they want to yeah. go off of them. And you've got some opportunities this week between a fucking Saints, Cincinnati, uh, goddamn Steahawks, even though you might not even need it there, depending on who you're talking to. I think a couple of these real true wongs hit now. They start to hit heavy, and and I think I'm going to start playing teasers now. I haven't played one all year because they're getting fucking murdered. Uh, I'm well, let, not let, me, uh, let me back you up on that because because what happens in November? I mean, we were talking last week how the lines get a lot sharper in November because the you know I mean we're we're talking NFL here. We got now now we have a 17 season slate, so it's not like a whole lot of. Uh, substance we got to create these lines for the books but but now we're halfway through the season these lines will start getting sharper and i do believe that that the wong teasers will start possibly you know doing a lot better than they have so far in my opinion what you think about that gino yeah i agree there's a, there's really only two i see right now it's seattle and uh jacksonville hmm. and Low total, yeah. Yeah. Can you explain the, the Wong for uh, you know, listeners that have no idea what a Wong teaser is or need a, re uh, a refresher? Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say, technically, Seattle and Jacksonville, both their team total erases it. So, technically, there's zero 
zero games right now that qualify for the Wong. So where, where Wong came from, uh, it's Stanford Wong. Uh, that's his name. His first name is Stanford. He didn't have nothing to do with school. Uh, he, he just realized that with percentages, the majority of NFL games end between one and seven. So the reason why it tricks so many people that are like, well, I would much rather take a plus three team to nine. You actually don't because you're only crossing one other number that matters and that's seven but at one and a half or two you're crossing two numbers that matter and those num that's essentially the percentage difference of loss and gain so that's where people are like why would you ever like jacksonville plus seven and a half over if they're plus nine well i don't i like that the books only have them at one and a half and i get across three and seven that's what it comes down to and then the second part equally as important the team total Total game needs to be under 46 because if you go over that, the value of points just shrinks. I can't tell you as a book how many dudes would tease games with 50, 60 points, you know, 50, not 60 points, but 50, you know, whatever. You're paying the same for less valuable points or they'll cross zero. The reason why you don't cross zero, you're losing two of your points, period. Minus one and a half to plus one, they can't, you know, plus a half, it doesn't matter. So when you lose those points, the games that end there are so few and far between that you just put yourself into red. And teasers are meant to just to make you feel good. That's all I do. How many times have you know, someone wins a teaser, they're like, damn, I should have just taken the regular uh, Every time, and that's why I haven't placed one this year, <laughs> I always preach this to the parlay folks. And I know there are valuable ways to do parlays, 100%, I get all that, but to me, it's so hard to win one. How dare you put <laughs> two to fucking gather, you piece of shit. Especially oh because here's how I learned. I was fucked over so many times on those Sunday night games. I didn't even know what a teaser blocker was until we started doing the show. Even though I knew what a teaser was. I knew what a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand that it's set up that way. And look how many people lost. <clears> I think it was last Sunday or two Sundays ago on, on, on something. just stupid. They, Everybody had like plus fucking... 12 in their pocket didn't matter it's just it's so frustrating but again yeah i'm gonna play a couple well, of them just you, to, just to you, do you it you know you know what's kind of blowing my mind you know i don't know if it is to you but uh pretty much every spot that the books have tried to block the teaser the teaser hasn't cash i know they're, dude, they're getting damn good what what it is i dude i actually made a twitter post and i'm not that big on twitter so when something i do on there goes viral it's like a, a big deal and again i sound like a, a dork but i mean it just because clearly i struck some chords all i said was i've been in this game 20 something years and i've never seen so many true lines and of course a bunch of people from books commented on it oh you amateur you don't know what you're talking about da, da, da. and I, I was like I must be on to something if you're getting really defensive over this and i explained it I said, it's well known that books don't just put out the true lines. And they're like, that's a rumor. You don't know what you're talking about. Homie, I, will, I pay for data. I can see reverse line movement and the lines don't move. To say that all lines move identical, it's like, I didn't even think I was making a bold claim. I thought I was pretty much saying what everyone already knew and just telling people, hey, have fun because I'm seeing more true lines than I've ever seen. And the reason I say that is I genuinely believe the volume now is getting so high that although we're losing value on Wongs and stuff like that, there's still a lot of ways to make money. And I think it was misconstrued that I was saying there's no more money to make a gambling. I wasn't saying that at all. I just said, holy shit, I used to cap my own games, make my own lines and spreads to find value. Half the time I'm three hours in and I see that they literally, I'm getting like, I'm down to the last four games of a full slate. I'm like, everyone was the true line. And I'm like, wasting hours and i'm like damn they're just throwing bones now and just go with you know the defense ratios go with the buy low sell high off who's off a loss that's like for instance jacksonville this week technically not a wong why do i not like them because vegas has got their doors blown off them i don't like buying i not you know I, I like going with teams that just got smoked but right. i'd much I, rather have vegas you, minus you know, one yeah so I, like, I, I have to completely it. agree with you. You know, I think you really have to dig a lot deeper now than than what used to work. I mean, yeah. now you like because everything's backed into the lines now, right? I mean, everything. they really are true lines. There, there's and everybody knows it all. Everybody knows. I mean, you really have to dig deep to find a, any type of an edge anymore. I mean, you know, I, you know, 
And and I, I hate to be that I, it, it is, but it's not, I still am finding a lot of the edges that are still just working. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it's just, it's because they're grabbing, you got to remember there's people every day that what turn it, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, that D that's going to get sucked in and God damn, it's taken me a long time to get this. And I'm just seeing it continuously on all these other text threads with my friends who are like, yeah, no problem. Philly minus 13 and a half. I no longer correct them anymore. I just say, man, that's a lot of points because they think I'm talking shit. But when I've given them the Browns and I just text them, it's all these fucking win- nobody can believe it either. You know, and it's it's now becoming uh, clear more than ever. And how many times did we in the beginning of the year take all these overs and these unders were hitting? Now we take yep. the overs, right? I mean, it's just <laughs> exactly. it, you got to just and that's be aware. We're and, just and, talking and, about that, DJ. I mean, that, that's not, that's the way you find an edge now is is you what you got to take advantage of the books basically overcorrecting what people are going to be betting on. Right. Like, cause, cause I mean, there's a huge amount of people betting up. So it's not, and not like it used to be. It's not like the, the sharp money doesn't really matter anymore. I don't think, I think so it's, I'm, I'm with both of you and what I'll say. And again, I don't want to sound like a genius cause I'm not, I lose 45% of my bets, but it's plenty to make money. And you're um, just a bad gambler. You're a businessman. Yeah. I, it, and what, exactly. <laughs> you are not a bad gambler. I'm I, I've heard a lot of stuff you said, bro. Hey, Stop it. What What I'll say, and then, I mean this, you can. I, I'll maybe post a screenshot and shout you all out tomorrow. Literally in our group, I said, "I like the over 45," and they said, "Why?" I said, "Honestly, it opened up at 48. I'm getting three free points." Now, this worked out really perfect. Because now it lands on 46. I look like a genius. But mm-hmm. it happens all the time where I don't look like a genius. But the point is, I got three free points. Don't overthink that. Three free points, they would charge you 40% to buy that. I just got it free because the public bet down the under because unders have been hitting all year. So you can just reward it however you want. It's a fade the public. Yeah. It's just value. It's value. You know, a game opens at 57 and yep. the public drives it down to 51. I don't care who's playing Johnny Saints versus the fucking St. Mary's is stupid. I'm pounding the over 51. And I'm getting six points what? of value. Well, not in college, but NFL. Yes. Exactly what we were just talking about. Like, cause now there's so much widely available information. Everybody's like, Oh, look, this trend, that trend, like Cardinals don't cover at the house. Oh, and seven at the house. Right. And now yeah. they're and two. So as a smart dude, what do you do? It's it's the uh, the law of, of that the law of averages, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree with a everything. Big, a big a big cluster of of non covers at the house, and now everybody's talking about how Arizona doesn't cover at the house. So now we get a big cluster of covers yeah. at the house, right? Like and so you literally, Maddie start and I taking the. Like I'm not kidding you, Maddie and I start our show, and you guys. Please take it, borrow it. You'll probably do a better job than us. Just trending. I just want to talk about what the public's talking about because whatever the fuck it is, the value has gone and I want the opposite. Exactly. So literally, when everyone exactly. says exactly. home dogs in prime time is dead, I want it. And Dean, when you day. said you yeah. said long teasers, like when I said they're dead, they're now back alive. alive. The second everyone thinks they're dead, alive. they're back alive. <laughs> yes. That, that's all I'm saying. Find the, out whatever's the struggle trending. There. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because the books are watching everybody talking about this, right? And and they're not fucking stupid, so they're gonna shade the line to whatever everybody's talking about. They're gonna shade the line the other way. I mean, it's, it's and there's so many new betters, like right. There's people that just thought there's no way. Like I can't tell you that, again. I'm not trying to sound perfect. I happen to go three and zero tonight, but that's not every not day. The point. Not the point. But Houston, like I took them plus three in the first quarter. Not I. I would have taken Philly first half if it moved the other way. I did it because every line moved except that one away from me. And it went down from minus 120 to even. So I like plus three. No, what yeah. this could easily have been seven to three, Philly. But I also think a I good point about mm-hmm. the good point we're talking about here is also this last the entire season. It's not just one week. And like if yes. you get bad one week, you're gonna be fine eventually in the long run if you use this method. Exactly. And mm-hmm. that's where I have red weeks. My, my biggest pet peeve when people, cause like I didn't want to have like people using my algo because I see it stealing points from me. I'll put it out and I'll see the lines move. And I'm not saying I'm a big deal just cause that's how TikTok is. When one person tells it, a hundred people regurgitate it. It's not me mm-hmm. so much, 
It's the fact that if I make a video, I notice that play is now made by 10 other videos and then they have more reach than me. Cause the, a lot of these kids are not cappers, but they're really good at making content. Right. So they literally watch content from cappers they trust and then they spin it off. So That's either way you point. slice it, anything you give out, 100,000 to 250,000 gamblers are going to see. And it actually moves the lines. I, I joked sure. with Maddie. I said, I'm going to find the biggest square play and say it's my biggest bet of the year on the opposite side and see if I could see if I can get a couple couple points for free. Oh, points just, and pound the other way. Just yeah. See, just to see. Oh, okay. I, I've never done yeah. it, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. Well, and I want to hold that thought for Notch to get back because I actually disagree with him, but maybe you're right. He is convinced there are people in Vegas that watch these TikTok videos and just fucking go the other way. Now, I don't think so because I don't think there's enough volume on TikTok. And I mean, but aren't yeah. they smarter than that? They don't need to watch these fucking TikTok videos to understand. Like, I will say I that, <laughs> there are there are people out there, though, that will call cappers out. We've never really been called out. I mean, I'm surprised. And that's probably why we don't get any action. We got we put out a lot of fucking winners for free. God damn it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ricky Knotts, we were talking about TikTok. And um, when you walked away and, and, and Gino made a point about, you know, uh, people on TikTok. Uh, go ahead. Say it again, Gino. Because I, yeah, I no, all I said was. Mo, what what's the word uh basically the highest form of flattery is when someone impersonates you and i i don't literally i'm not afraid of anyone out there i'm just saying i don't mean this disrespectfully but a lot of people that i always see on my videos liking and commenting on them i i just can't help but notice they're rarely against me and usually if i give out a big pick or i say i love this pick there's a few more videos made about it within an hour. And that's cool. It, it, it's honestly a compliment. It means they trust me and they've learned from me. But I can't help but notice when those wave out, they actually do move the lines. Now, I'm not taking credit for it. I'm saying when a couple good cappers find value the same way most cappers find value, there's 10 or 20 guys. And the, and the gambling community is so small on TikTok, even though it's so big from a views perspective, there's really only like 30 guys yeah. that are giving out plays every day. And yeah. those 30 guys collectively are followed by half a million people. And right. it, it's a small enough community, but my point was it moves lines. I've a hundred percent seen it. So let me, let me, I'll, I'll be the ref on this boxing match between you two. Do I think the books watch TikTok? No, I don't know if they're watching it, but I think they're close enough dialed in that they know when something goes out, they get a bunch of plays. They have so many data triggers set up that if 50 plays come in from 50 anonymous IPs, they're going to move it. They're going to steam the shit out of that. And I've yeah. seen lines move quicker than I've ever seen. So they're, they're all, so the, el the, el the algorithm is already synced in where they know, okay, okay, we got yeah. it. It's part of their so, care. So, Gino, this is partly the reason why I decided to get off TikTok because – Oh, listen, sorry, listen. Hey, hey, no, shut no, up. no, no. I love no, no, I, I, I love I love when the dogs sorry, bark because we, no, no, no. Dogs? we we had so many fucking dog bets. We've got Sheesh. dogs just barking. I know We're whenever so they hot. bark, that's when we talk about What's the, the play. What's dog the play? Of the week. Tank, yeah, oh, that's a hot play. This these aren't even dogs. Dog of the week. These are, Washington. Washington. These are tanks. These are little I know, tanks. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> they are just the fucking. They're, but but uh, Gino, to 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 further up what you're saying, this is partly why I got off TikTok because I, I feel like me, I, I never made a dollar off being on TikTok. I never made a dollar off uh, the business we tried to start, and I feel like it, it's it's kind of ruining the edges that I have. Yeah, by, absolutely. And and so I, I just decided to get off there because I I'm, I make honestly I I pay my bills I do everything I do off the bets I make and and I feel like you know if if I give this info out whether you know you know a lot of people didn't really listen to me but uh, but I you know I, I think a fair amount of people did and I feel like the more I give out you know the very small we know the the edge we have is so small and and yeah. if you give it to a certain amount of people then it's gone, right? I mean, you you know what? To to level with you, I used to feel bad, like I would put my plays in and I'd give them out second, and they'd have different lines, and then I just said fuck it. So like, for instance, the the this game, it was forty three when I put it in. I told Maddie I'm putting it in, 
and I, it's not that I'm lying. I just want you all to know. Cause this no, is so you, 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 you said you took over 43 or cause it'll be a 43 and a half. I took over 40, yeah, 43, 43 and a half. Oh, I don't, I don't yeah. remember the exact number. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, okay. But then I, on the show, because it was 45 when we were going to release it and we recorded it, you know, eight at night. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going over 45. Is that completely authentic? No, because my money was on 43 and a half. Did but I you're still, still like it at 45? Of course. I wouldn't lie to people. But that's where I, before I would wait, give it, watch it move. And I was like, wait. I gotta feed myself first. So, so question to you, Gino. Sorry to interrupt you, but no, no, you're good. You, you yourself, would you have actually bet it once? I mean, when when it opened at forty three and and it moved up two points. Yeah. I mean, at that point, the edge is gone, right? I mean, yeah. So what? I, and it's a good question. So what I so again, uh, when, 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 wouldn't the edge be gone at forty six? You're not through three yet. So it, it, it depends. Or is on it a safety? Got. So I had this as a unit and a half play, which means for me, for React, my average is usually half a unit to one unit. So I essentially shrink a half a unit each point. So to Rigo's point, I'd be, I'd be down to a half a unit, not even that excited about it, maybe not even betting it. But I still liked it in the sense that I still thought that it should go significantly over. I genuinely believe, and I hope this answers his full question. I genuinely believe that 47 and a half was the true line and it opened up at 48. I thought they were enticing people to go under. And then when I still got it at 45, I liked it just not as much because I genuinely thought, but that's why when I gave it out, I gave it out as a unit at 45, even though I had a unit and a half at 43 and a half. So again, I don't want this to like discredit me it's just the the honest no truth. no it doesn't discredit you yeah, yeah. for sure i i think if anything you know but it's, it's just it, it's just all, all i'm trying to pump in here gino is yeah. that the the edge is so small right yeah, that, yeah you're right that i mean you know a point move or no no you're right, half dude. a point move it, it it decreases the the actual bet or completely keeps you off the bet but right sometimes like, yeah. but sometimes you're right I, and i want to i want to say this if something goes to 58 to 51 do your homework it may be a weather thing it may be a serious 100%. injury where 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 it's only going to go to 35 so that doesn't always pan out well you, and i mean there's you know? there's so many other things dj is is you know there's there's setups for lines i mean a lot of times you see a you see a steam move and everybody's like, oh look, the steam here, and then you'll see early Sunday morning you'll see that thing steam right back up because it, it was just you know, all with, it was was the, the syndicates were just setting it to where they wanted it to be. I mean, with with, with you talking, the steam about never it. absolutely means anything. And and to me, what makes me so confident is I, I have a, a you know the guy and I can't take credit for this at all. We've talked about this a lot. Is the models that I use to where I truly believe there's value or not is, is from a dude who's been creating his model for 40 years. Yep. And, uh, and I, I believe in, in his lines way more than I believe in anything else that I see. And, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes I see the steam going some weird way and I automatically, I'm like, yep, they're just setting it up to go back the other way or, or they're waiting for it to get here. Or, so it, it I I I, uh, I I just I just wanted people to know, and I know Gino could back me up on this that that you know one point could mean so much. Like Everything. it could be the yeah, it, it could be the absolute difference of just not playing the game or yeah. Well, I mean that's why I do too because I like having fun with gambling. Still, like I, I I do it to make money, but I also like having fun. I give out my power rankings every Tuesday to everyone because it doesn't that doesn't mess up my lines and what i always tell people you know going back to the bed only peer to peer i'm like hey because people have fun to argue like I, i'll flat out say I, I have minnesota over dallas that's going to piss off a lot of dallas has a lot of good, you know a lot of fans i tell anyone in my power rankings if you have a team that you think's higher than one of my teams any team underneath another team on my power rankings i'll bet you against it so if you ever see a team that's like four or five, six or seven on my power rankings, but your team is eight, nine or 10, and you believe they should be above them, we can bet. And that's, and there's lines and odds, and I'm not getting crazy margins on you. It's like, hey, man, I think this team's better. You don't. We can bet it. And that's there, all. There's always, 
and tell me not, Gina, there's always crazy disagreements as far as, uh, is these power rankings, right? Like, yeah, like, let, let's look at, uh, I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with people about the dolphins and, and I, I have a lot of people that think they're not power rated correctly because you know, the games that Tua missed. And we saw when the line opened here, three and a three and a hook went up to five and now you're seeing the money come back the other way. So it, it's never going to be, you know, different models are going to say different things. And I had the, I put the, I put the Dolphins at six, one above the Cowboys. And people went nuts. I said I like their defense, and I like their pass game. It, the, dude, the fact that Cheetah is able to, two ain't even making good throws. This kid's coming back and getting half the throws. He just knows how to get open in the space. So it doesn't mean that it's the be all end all. I change my power rankings every week, but. What do you give about? You know, I'll put a, a unit next to it just to have fun if anyone thinks that their team's better. I had the Titans all the way back at eight. I like the Titans. I like their run game and I like their defense. But See, I that's absolutely already have two we disagree on. Yeah, exactly. I got people said, How can you have your Niners over Titans? I said, because if we played on a neutral field, we'd smoke their ass. So it it's it's not like a, at the end of the day, I don't mind splitting hairs and being a data guy. At the end of the day, I like gambling and I like being right. And that – that's where it comes back to. I'll yeah. bet shit if I lose a point. If you want, an, if you want a, a long-winded answer to your question, I'll bet shit. Even though I know the math, I still have that degen in me. That's like, dude, you like that a point ago? Why you bet? And I'm yeah. like, I, I still want to be right. Yeah, yeah, you still want to be right, and that's the part why all the stuff that we talk about that we think we're gonna we're worried about that we're giving away is never gonna matter just wait till the world's biggest generational shift in revenue happens not revenue but just currency when all the boomers die the fucking gambling industry is gonna go through the roof look at i'm looking at jobs out there in the marketplace there's more fucking sports book managers i have zero uh, uh business being in the gaming industry i've applied to every one of them haven't heard yet but i've got faith that gary indiana is gonna hire me rush gaming will See, you imagine me in a fucking casino. Hey, what the fuck we doing? <laughs> Where you go? I'm, anyways, I'm never gonna work there. Any commission. So the reality is this. Um, I wanted to bring up something. Um, and and, and I remember there are specific TikToks with spe specific people that um uh who's that Jerome Boger holding number ninety five um, holding holding Gino Di Gino Diablo Gino Diani. Um, so anyways. Um, guy, guy wrote, Hey, <laughs> does bet openly take credit, credit cards? And, and, and I thought originally, okay, first of all, bro, I don't even know if, if any, anybody takes credit cards and there's obviously the credit. All sports books do. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Number one, cause I don't do that. Yeah. I just cash. I know. Gino was giving them credit. great advice. I saw but, that. But Gino, let, let, can you just, just reiterate and just, we're, we're always trying to yeah. just spread good news so, for the, for the, for the people who need help out there. So the number one reason books make money is not the 10% juice. Books make more money than the sports books. Now, let me, let me read, read. An, an illegal right. bookie letting people operate on credit makes more, I wanna speak fully, makes more money per user than a sports book in a casino yeah. with chips up front. Because I always do this again, like I'm going back to my dirty days and thank God my wife's asleep. I always told people when I was a book, I was actually worse than a Coke dealer or fucking someone slinging pot. Because someone slinging pot gets what they want. The Coke dealer, you know, you, you drive over your house, they get you get what you want. You hand it to them, you know, you listen to Biggie, you know, you think a crackhead paying you back, you don't, you don't let them do it. So they pick their money up front. <laughs> but a sports book a long time ago, real mob days, realized that everyone thinks they're fucking right. So they're gonna make bets that they think they're gonna win with money they don't have to lose. And then they're gonna lose one and say, well, I was wrong, that's fine. But I was wrong because the ref, I was wrong because the bad call, I was wrong because the fumble. And then they're gonna fucking double it up. And at the end of the day, the reason why we don't take credit cards, even though technically we could, is one, I don't wanna gouge my guys. If I had to tell two sides of every story, I want longevity. I actually don't want people going belly up. I want people betting. Once a day, very like if you wanted to call me out, there's actually selfish and unselfish intentions for my bankroll management, my educational videos, because I actually noticed with my market, people were betting too many favorites, but that means the bet doesn't fill. I need people smart and stupid. 
I need people favorites and dogs. I need people home and away. I need overs and unders. So the businessman in me wanted to balance the market, but the, the gen in me that was losing what I couldn't afford to lose, I was like, dude, I need to just show people they're not different, even though they think they are. How they think is exactly how every motherfucking gambler, it's like the dude in the strip club. Everyone thinks the chick he just dropped the hundred on for a lap dance wants to fuck her. And they don't. Well, and you know, we do, let me, I do exchange some numbers with some. I mean, I'm, let me, you know, let me you're back Gino up right now. Let me, you're, you know, you're, you're gonna let see me, that. let me back you up on some, you know, because, because the sports books that actually get humongous volume, they don't want too much hold, right? Because that's bad for not. business. So, a bookie, yeah, you want a lot of hold, right? Because you're not getting the huge amount of volume that that like Fanduel and yeah, you know, yeah. like Fanduel. You'll see Fanduel put out those soft lines, like you know, I, I they fooled me on that uh that Thursday night football game with uh with the Bucks and the Ravens. That was a soft line, bro. Let, let, I mean, that was you know that they, they were, and that's good for business for them, right? They need the the betters to win, the betting public. They need them it. to win. I would even go further. Going. They're giving out true lines and soft lines on the real popular ones, the spread, money line total, just because they're making so much goddamn money on the player props, same game parlays, and bullshit. Live bets. Yeah, that's first why. First half bets. When they give out those, like, pass for one yard to win, people are like, it's fixed if it doesn't happen. They're not trying to punk you for that. They're trying to throw you some bread, the Roman mob. They're trying to throw you some bread because they know that you're going to bleed it out. On live bets and props and same game pilot. Exactly. Yeah, they've 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 really got it dialed in. I mean, when you actually look at it and you have the live lines up and you're looking at the market, it turns red, it turns green. Your your instinct is to always go green, right? And so I'm just fucking like slamming reds. You know, uh, uh, we uh, Chris, we talked about it yesterday. It's a perfect example. Pelicans, Lakers. They scored two quick buckets. The fucking total skyrocketed algorithm up to like two thirty, yeah. two thirty five slam the under we come back five minutes later it's at 212 i mean it's it's like but people don't do that all the time i get it i'm just saying there are yeah. options to win out there those things will never change uh as far as i'm concerned uh um, well, and, and live live betting just opens up like you know as, yeah there's a dog in the house detroit was, lions oh, another winner this weekend sorry. detroit lions sorry, running sorry. lions dog of the week i love it they're barking that's also why bet openly is gonna be so gonna what, be fun because that's what i wanted to just, get to we can just go we don't have to worry about the books we don't have to try to bet the books we can just but bet normal you dudes can, but you can just take book. advantage of that shit <laughs> you're the book you're already gonna go on mgm anyway here's a whole other angle i'm gonna go on mgm anyways i'm gonna place a five fucking unit bet on the over i'm gonna take the plus 14 why not go on gino's site and put fucking the bet out there for some fucking guy to take now i'm not gonna yeah. do this because i don't want to call his client soccer's but that's the part of the business where yeah, I need to get in there. I'm just going to put every fucking one of my plays in there because nobody's going to like them. Right. And then I'm just going to clean up. And But I don't have to put them a lot. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Yeah, you I, can do it. Five bets a week. Dude, there's 100 ways to make money in there. The, the live hey. bets are only 1% too instead of the 20. I haven't even done the live yet. I haven't even done the live. Hey, Gino, I, uh, that's cool I too. You can do lives. I was nice. telling the boys what uh what I was doing on bed openly. I was just going up and swooping up auto parlays every week. I, mean, I was going to say that's the They're not huge, thing. but uh, but – that's you. You get the opportunity to be be the book right there and, and to yeah. take dude. a bet that has huge ROI. Like it, I dude, tell dude. people, it's so funny because that's the one that I thought would resonate with everyone. But TikTok, every time we make a video, the know nothings clown on Maddie and I, and I'm just like, I'm not, I don't even waste my breath fighting him anymore. Literally, assuming the spread is the true line, if there's two teams, anything paying under three to one. You have ROI. It's just that that simple. Yep. And anything under seven to one on a three team, you have ROI. And Matt just did it. Matt you, just I've did tried. it. I still have more unfilled hosted than I have unfilled regulars. And it's I try and tell them, dude, like, just look. If it pays two and a half to one, two point six to one, whatever, you're making 20, 30 percent margin. And, sitting and right look there. now. You have how many users? I mean, how many parlays yeah. are getting posted on there on a weekly basis? You know, what I mean, yeah, you yeah. Literally, you have the opportunity to get the ROI that a, that a book gets. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's insane. 
And the craziest part, the, the craziest part to me of this to date is that we ran a search. So people always yell at me when their winners don't fill. And that's fair. I'd be pissed if my winners don't fill too. Mm -hmm. right. But we looked at the macro and more losses don't fill than wins. Both wow. volume of bets and plays. Wow. Because when it doesn't fill, the most common bets that don't fill are when the universe is all stacked on one team and they just fold. And that is like Tampa Bay last Thursday. Mm -hmm. Those were all the bets not filling. I don't hear from those people. When their losses don't fill, they don't say a word. But I got to hear when their winners don't fill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, from your perspective, real quick, we, we couldn't do any justice here without getting any uh, other football advice. Tampa Bay, is, is it over? I mean, is this a fade team? And then the Atlanta Falcons, what do you think? Moving so, forward, you know, how do you, how, how do you, how do you address Buccaneers? Because you got so much public yeah. entity, but you do have good players. I feel like they can still snap at any time, but what the fuck is going on there? So my number one team total under this year was Tampa Bay. Yeah. I think That's what I, gave out to. Yeah. I was, I literally, I good had play. two team totals. I gave out the under in Tampa Bay and the over in Tennessee. I said, everyone has crowned Indianapolis. Matt Ryan hasn't seen this line of this team. I was like, I don't crown people. Oh, actually, I also said Kansas City wins the West. So Damn. I've never gone 8-0. But technically, I'm on pace to go 8-0, which doesn't happen a lot. But I will say I actually think Tampa Bay still wins the division. And all that matters is they get through all the bullshit. I thought it wasn't Atlanta. So good up on Atlanta performing. Mariota's looking good. I'm actually proud of the kid. I liked him a lot when he was at Oregon. Um, I thought New Orleans was going to take advantage of a disheveled Tampa Bay, and they didn't. I think they've left the door open that Tampa Bay still takes that division, but I do think they're one and done in the playoffs. Okay. Whoever gets to go there is getting a gift. Fair enough. And uh, go ahead. Gino, you don't think business wise, you don't think the NFL is going to want Tampa Bay in the playoffs? I mean, uh, Dude, I, I use that as an angle myself. I and no, I mean I, I was wrong on Thursday night football, but I've seen this. You know, I've I've been betting for 15 plus years, and you I've know, seen that like, the NFL what? does does a, uh, you know, it's good for business to have Tom Brady in the playoffs, right? Yeah, one of my biggest systems that I probably don't talk about because it's so boring is I actually really closely check refs. I actually really With closely Rick. check offense defensive penalties. Rick points would allowed. Love what are you, are you reading the newspaper? Sorry, no, yeah. you're you, no, you're right. Uh, our guy Rick, he always checks the refs and you know, the they, and, and and how they lean to the under or over, you know, and things like it's that. A, dude, so. it's a good way to find value. Like, there's just refs that flat out don't let DB DBs play. They're just they were a wide receiver in freaking middle school and they're still married to him. That's something. hilarious. <laughs> uh, wow, I, that's what I look at is how that's crazy I, intel. I I've never even points. heard of that. Who I track the average points? Do you know what ref that is in the league? Is there a no, ref? I, okay. No, I was just, just joking. Yeah. yeah. I, what, I, what I noticed is there are refs that absolutely call more defensive and offensive penalties. So I track that and the total points allowed. And then I also track points for the home team and away team. I, and no joke. I think some refs hold the flag when they're at someone else's home because they can't take the heat and other people love it. Like, it's just like different personalities, like psychology. So I only use it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a standalone system. It's only a system that I use to enhance or decrease a unit. If my other systems align with it. So, um, okay. That's, that's the only thing I believe. I don't, the reason is like the Rams opened up that stadium, right? Everyone thought they wanted to be there. I bet the Rams week eight last year. I'm giving you guys all of my fucking winners. I lose two, I promise. Uh, and <laughs> the reason I, I don't believe it's like my Niners dropped the fucking duck of an interception that would have ended that game. So like, although things do fall into place sometimes, sometimes they don't Philly this year. I don't, I don't think anyone had any business. I think a Dodgers Houston rematch would have gotten way more ratings, but you can't yeah, stop some yeah. team. I think they'll help them. They'll call games. I believe in that, uh, that crooked ref in the NBA. Mm-hmm. 
What was what was your take on the Mike Evans referee uh, signature thing? What, what what was that? And, you know, I almost made a video and I didn't because I didn't want to piss off a bunch of children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I literally said to myself, "They're all saying it's fixed because they asked for a signature on a game the dude just came out not covered." <laughs> I, I literally almost said because yeah. I watched a bunch of these go by to see ten versions of him. Tampa Bay didn't cover that game. No. So what was fixed about it that they're fans and they made them lose? Yeah, and, and don't forget Mike Evans dropped a wide open touchdown, right? So it's like, what are they it's talking about? Yeah. I didn't really get like so refs are fans of football. Yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, the proof is the proof is in. Well, my my thing, uh, Gino, is yeah. is we look at like uh the Tim Donaghy thing, right? Yep. That's what I always kind of lingers in my head is is just, you know, the, these are obviously humongous businesses and uh well, i agree and yeah, i don't want you know I don't want of to course to, to them they, they don't give a fuck about the gambling side right i mean to them yeah, yeah. they could care less about what That's the what money's on or any of that but to them they do have certain outcomes that they would like business wise for I, for their business too i completely agree so I, I think we're saying the same thing and maybe i worded it too harshly what, what i was saying is the nfl business is too big for them to say, I need Buffalo to win, but not covered. Like, I completely they're not going to get I into that agree. nuanced bullshit. But, but they will say with Tim Donahue, hey, we're a superstar-driven league. Fucking hold your whistle unless it's an obvious foul. That, I believe, hey, ratings are down. The business is lower. I need more points. That's why when I look at refs, I just look at how they call penalties. I don't think they're fixing the game to cover or not. I have my leans from other stuff, and that's where I'll add a sprinkle on top if it aligns with what I think. Let, let, let me ask you one other question, Gino. So, sorry, DJ. I'm, I'm, no, it's I just, okay. I had a lot we're of, wrapping up. This lot. is it. Hey, we're good. I had, I had a lot. I had a lot of stuff good. I wanted to ask Gino. Totally what, fine. what do you think about uh? What do you think about uh? That that last Sunday night football game, and uh, the fact that uh. You know, the whole DK thing with Josh Allen. And, I mean, I, I watched it. And, and, I mean, you know, it was a lot of pretty – to me, I was watching it, and I, I saw a lot of a lot of passes that I know Josh Allen makes, like, you with his eyes of, closed. You talking about his, his picks late and instead of – No, the no, goal, well, I mean, covered? just just all together, I just kind of watched the game. And to me, I, I think it should be illegal for – for Josh Allen to be endorsed by DraftKings. And I don't know. I didn't even I mean, know he what's, was. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, so he he's, he's endorsed by DraftKings? Yeah, he's he's like their poster boy now. Oh, okay. I had no idea. Uh what I would what I would say, like wa- watching that game, those were some damn good picks. Like that one, he threw a fucking laser beam. And I'm not he, even talking about the picks. I, I'm just talking yeah, I'm about saying, the, the missed passes, like late in the game that, that – I mean, Josh Allen, he does those with his eyes closed. No, no, I, I agree. He didn't have the best of the games. I, I do look at his stats a lot, though. He, he makes a lot of mistakes trying to force stuff. Some people he ignore, did that at Wyoming, too. Yeah, some people ignore that he's always trying to make big plays. He, they, he doesn't know how to, like – take the sack and get the field goal. He, he forces a lot. So, um, I had, yeah. I, and not I not, like not to game. say it's rigged, not to say it's rigged, Gino, but, but if, no, if, a, if a quarterback is endorsed by DraftKings and I mean, uh, of course, DraftKings wanted, wanted uh, the Packers to cover that game. And it, it just, to me, it just felt kind of weird there. I don't know. Maybe no, no, I, I, I hear you. It's for me, it's more like, it's like hiding in plain sight. Like, are they that ballsy to endorse Josh Allen and, and the Buffalo like goes? I, I thought it should be illegal against the spread. I thought it should be illegal, honestly. No, I, it's, it's an interesting one. I, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm not prepared. I didn't know he was sponsored by DraftKings. I didn't I mean, even he's know. He's like that. their poster boy now. Yeah, I didn't know they were allowed. I didn't know they were allowed to sponsor. Uh, players but i guess you know as long as they're not gambling i guess <laughs> yeah that's calvin ridley yeah that, that poor guy 
<laughs> yeah, no, there's the the other shit that happens that people get way less of a punishment, and he just places a small few parlays, and he gets fucked for a whole year. And none of them were sharp. None of them were insider. Yeah. He, he was just throwing their parlays on his couch. <laughs> I, I guess I guess my argument here is is a uh, is is this stuff getting so huge, like the gambling side of it, that that maybe you know I mean to me I I was on the Packers plus uh plus eleven and a hook in that game and no. and I watched it and I didn't feel one point in time in that game that I was on the right side. And I, and I mean I just I, thought, I saw I thought, some I, I saw we I saw fine. some iffy. Well, I mean, I, I I believe that we were on the complete wrong side, DJ, and mm-hmm. and I just I, I was watching, well, I was we watching a, but we were, I was we watching. Weren't. Well, I mean, the right side is the one that catches, right? But yeah, I don't know. I, I was just watching a Josh Allen just throw throw some passes that were Josh Allen. No, Josh Allen is not a good quarterback. I mean, I love him, but he's not a great quarterback. Not a great quarterback. He can't throw. That's bold. I mean, you guys are getting bold now. <laughs> he's a great quarterback. I watch I him. I, wa- I watch him throw touchdown passes into the ground. He's a little lazy. I love him and would take him any day of the week. I'm not saying. I was gonna say I wish he was my quarterback. I wish he yeah, was. Yeah, he's one hundred percent. Me, he's. I'm just saying. I've seen some. He's yeah. Um, we got to wrap this up. We've got two more guests on this fucking show tonight. I don't know how we <laughs> three hours. We my, know. Wait, Gino, my fucking bad. podcast. My bad, guys. Couple questions, real quick, for Gino. Where Where do you put your uh, power rankings out for anybody that wants to? Oh yeah, no, no, we're not yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. On, yeah. on Tuesdays, I throw them on Twitter. I actually should start putting them on TikTok too. Um, okay, that that's a fuck up. So I'll, I'll probably make a video tonight. Now you reminded me. I think I just put you them just, on Twitter. All you got to do, see, okay. if you asked about value of Hashmark Media. Just send it over to us. We'll spice it up for you. Don't you have Maddie for that? Is that what he's doing? Yeah, yeah, Matt, he up. Stuff, so. Okay, where's Matt at, though? This is off the record. Where does he live? We're both actually coincidentally in Delray yeah. Beach, Florida, South uh, South Palm Beach. When you guys okay. do that, when you guys do your show, um, where are you doing that? Is it like a, a lease of space, shared spot, podcast space? Dude, it's that? actually funny you bring that up. We've had a fucking nightmare. Just, we had a studio, then they tried to get a bigger studio, and like they messed it all up where it was loud in there. Like, it wasn't a good production. So then we subleased this like artist space where it's like, it's like a band. So right now we're, we're going to open up our own office probably by January 1st. And it's, oh, cool. it's going to be two sides. One side's going to be bet openly and the other side's going to be, we bet. And I'll okay. be there running the business and then Maddie will be good uh, growling in all the content and all the people. And good. then do you want to give out like some socials and things that we can find you at or, or yeah, uh... I, I think everything's bet dot openly. So B E T period openly um and then my twitter we have a bunch of twitters but there's gino my name is gino dot donati d-o-n-a-t-i g-i-n-o that it's gino bet openly i'm like the handle but the actual app um but yeah most stuff's bet oh bet dot openly the reason why our like a pr lady made me switch everything she's like hey you can't be bet openly anymore like it has to be a business so i spun off all my personal so there's Gino.Donati or Gino Bet Openly on TikTok too. Everyone's like, you don't give plays out anymore. And I'll tag my other one. So I still do all my education, all mm-hmm. of my plays, all of my stuff on the Gino page. And Bet Openly now is going to be like really, it'll be live bets on the feed, really good value. One of the coolest things that uh, would be super, I want to say fun or like, challenging we have two kind of bet types that i think people are underutilizing rico brought up the hosting parlays that's an insane amount of value i can't believe more people don't do it it's just not exciting you have all you need is one game to win versus the parlay you need them all to win so it's pretty simple math uh we added contests contests are supposed to help people have all the upside of parlays with none of the downside so literally you can create a contest it can be two people or it can be as many as 10 and you set the dollar amount and the number of teams and it pays that multiple. So literally, if you, cool. if you say five people in a five-team contest, people just pick five teams to win, no line, no spread, and whoever wins the most takes 99% of the pot. So again, 1% juice. You know how much you would lose in juice if you bet five favorite five team, money yeah. line in yeah. a parlay? You'd yeah. be bled out. And if you lose one, you're done. This yeah. Someone walks a winner. So people are using them for head-to-head a lot, which is actually – 
really good value. It's literally 99% stays with the people. Um, and then lastly, and sorry to make this a whole little elevator pitch, but I, you guys are smart enough that I want you doing this and having fun with it. Yeah, it's great. Teasers. We talked a lot about teasers. One thing that's not talked about enough is bet openly. You make your own lines and odds. So you actually can make a custom teaser. You can make one plus five, one plus six, one plus seven. You can make one team money line. Everyone else gets five points. You could borrow two from a Wong and give them six, but have the third one be money line. You can do whatever you want because it's completely customizable. So you could essentially give one team 10 points, the other team zero, or you could sell points. You can do anything you want. It's completely open site. So the thing that I, that really hasn't taken off and it's disappointed me. I just think it's too complex for some. We had a crabs on and he's a Washington fan and I've been high on Minnesota all year. I said, hey, I'll give you 13. I'm gonna take Minnesota minus 13, but I need to be paid two and a half to one. He said, done. You can literally do that kind of shit. So you can That's just cool. say, fuck it, I'm gonna make my own shit up. Yeah. And you can have fun. It's for like, if you're a fan, right? I wouldn't bet that with a stranger because that's not great odds. This given will give away 10 points. Right. But with a homie, for me to be right against them, that's that's what it's about. So it's, it's, more, it's more that kind of shit that we want to see more of. And uh, that, that I think is completely underutilized. I'm down with the 1%. I'm down with the less juice. I'm down with saving people money. Uh, the freedom stuff is pretty much underused because I don't think a lot of people understand it.